I'm I'm somebody who likes to give people chances. I'm somebody who is very accepting, very um, inviting, very enthusiastic about this entire shift in fashion that's happening, where you're seeing people from the streetwear world, people that don't really have any um, experience within working in the fashion, basically taking these amazing jobs at the you know at the top of the fashion industry it's really inspiring because i feel like for people like myself who maybe don't have access to some of these big brands who maybe don't have access to certain bits of information education whatever it may be to be able to see people that look like you that come from the same scene that are into the same shit that you're into take a t-shirt take a hoodie take a baseball cap take some trainers take some jeans and a small brand and take that to suddenly be designing for the biggest fashion houses out there and this playing their wares during Paris Fashion Week that's inspiring right that is really inspiring and it probably inspires thousands if not millions of kids out there to know that they can do it too that they can do it too they can do it too if they put their mind and heart to whatever they're doing but I have to say and I have to put, pat myself on the back here I did say when Pharrell got appointed as the successor um, for Virgil Abloh because of his unpassly, uh, his untimely passing, RIP to him, as the Louis Vuitton men's creative director, I did say at the time, this isn't going to end well. I did say at the time, this isn't going to end well, because I have never seen Pharrell design anything that I think was conducive or would kind of give him um, any sort of credence to be a good designer at Louis Vuitton. Because in my thinking, the last time he actually designed anything decent was when Nigo was still involved in Billionaire Boys Club. Because if you're not aware, when Nigo and Pharrell linked up, um, essentially Pharrell um, and Nigo and Skate Thing, which was the original um, illustrator and graphic designer for Bape, they were all involved in some other white guy too. I forgot his name. The white guy, I think that might do, does Kvempt. He was also involved. So there's a lot of people that were involved in making Billionaire Boys Club and ice cream and all this stuff really, really popular and really Really, sorry, really good back in the day because if you see uh, you know old billionaire boys club and you compare it to what they make nowadays it's night and day and mostly it's because of you know nico's obviously not involved in the design anymore he's busy with human made and kenzo and all the other stuff he's doing and obviously skating as well is probably doing his own thing as well maybe they can't afford him who knows but there was a whole entire group of people from the guy at kvempt from skate thing from nico all involved in helping him do his brand but since then, he's never actually done anything, I don't think, design-wise, that would make you believe he's a good fashion designer. The, you know, maybe one of his more iconic pieces that he made was that bulletproof down vest thing that he did with Montclair back in the day. Um, there's been a few collaboration, one-off pieces here and there. But in terms of a full collection, in terms of, you know, a, a spring summer show, an autumn show, a resort show, collaborations, you know, over 50 looks, I don't think he's got any range to show you that he could do it. And I think this is a good example as to why this relationship with Louis Vuitton is going to end in tears. Because I feel like this is the most basic um devoid of any real inspiration of any real design talent um piece that he's ever put out really and it's only what two or three seasons in and he's already doing shit like this so this is according to hype piece it says pack your lunch in pharrell williams's louis vuitton sandwich bag now this has been done to death by many uh, companies out there by many uh, sorry fashion brands we've seen this kind of you know um taking the everyday item and obviously luxing it up and turning it into something very um you know luxurious very expensive um very high quality wherever it may be but i just think this being so easily be done by somebody on instagram stories or something some random customized person could have easily done this and the fact that this is so um this is such a fucking you know an easy layup to kind of do and he did it i think for me is a good example as to why this relationship with louis vuitton is probably going to end in tears because if you're already reaching for these type of designs and you're only two or three seasons in this is probably proof that you're already running out of ideas he's already running out of ideas this is where he's going if he's already pulling for these references and putting out these shopping bags and i saw there was another there was another fucking um post i saw somewhere where he's made a 
leather croc version of the actual shopping bag so the actual louis vuitton shopping bag that's obviously in that same sort of like orange burnt brown sort of colorway um he also made a version of that shopping bag and he just made it in a leather material so it took the same shopping bag that was obviously given to you when you purchase stuff in louis vuitton in like that cardboardy paper type material and he's basically just changed it i think he made it into croc or some sort of high quality leather so the fact that he's doing this now at this point for me is proof that the guy has no clue what he's doing and it's probably going to end in tears sooner rather than later again maybe the sales um will be quite good in terms of the accessories because that's what people always say about louis vuitton they don't really care about their ready to wear the accessories is where they make most of their money but i think in general this stuff is going to be so forgetful so bad that people are going to be sitting there thinking you know what maybe kid super was actually a better option and I fucking hate Kid Super, but maybe Kid Super actually could have grown into the role and actually decide and actually put out better runway collections. Because so far, the runway collections I've seen, apart from the first one, have been absolutely terrible. Personally, for me, very very forgettable. Um, maybe there's a few pieces. There's a jacket. There's a couple of jackets. There's a couple of you know shirt and pant kind of combination tracksuit type of things that look decent. Um, there might have been a certain decent hat. I still think the hat that Rocky had was given, the one with the pearls, the little beanie, that's amazing. The matching denim suit is really cool. Um, the skirt from the first collection was really nice, as was the loafers and the socks and shit. But you know, apart from that. There wasn't really a lot from the collection that you were pining for and that you really wanted. A lot of it was kind of basic. And I think, again, like I said before, the fact that he's already reaching for these references, right? The lowest hanging fruit is already proof to me that he's already run out of ideas. So this is courtesy of Hypebeats. It says, Pharrell's debuted Louis Vuitton um, in June 2023, inviting guests to experience an unforgettable night in Paris. Fashion Week, the pixelated range, was a funky and bold and grounded in everyday streetwear. Even that pixelated collection, I, I think it got panned on fairly I, I quite like the pixelated camo stuff that he did but even that now people are now kind of panning and obviously turning you know changing their mind in it in real time so even with some of the fashion glitterati it hasn't really aged well when it comes to references it continues smooth leather textiles dominate the range um mitigating um sorry migrating um into the accessories line with an eye of surrealism williams first collaboration begins to land on shelves um we receive a closer look at the runway debuted sandwich bag the design mimics louis vuitton's 10 shop given the folded opening for the easy lunch um lunch access elsewhere raise louis vuitton letterings on the, on the midpoint and on the pull tab so i think the finish of it is kind of questionable personally for me i think the question the finish of it is kind of questionable especially around here like you know are these bits actually cut properly did they get folded differently i'm not too sure is that strap actually centered i don't know is the strap actually centered? I don't know. Could it have been made a bit differently to maybe mimic a bit of tape, to maybe mimic something different to as a kind of fastening? Because I feel like it looks a bit strange. Um, the font on the fucking itself, with it being raised the way it is, I'm not really too sure that was the right decision either. It kind of makes it look a bit weird from the from the from the when you zoom out. I think maybe having them embossed and then maybe having them coloured and then actually them wearing in over time would have actually looked a lot better. I don't think you need this thing to kind of look new all the time when you're wearing it. Actually, the more beat up it does look, the more worn it looks. It probably would actually like this. This Maison Fonde on 1854 Paris at the back, how it's been embossed. I think you should obviously have that logo in the front the same. I think that was actually how it actually worked better. But I think all these choices, um, again, are very questionable, but lend to me the idea that this guy is already running out of ideas. And talking about running out of ideas, look at this shit. He also designed these Timberland boots. So we're already getting these really crass, obvious, bait, um, trend-driven collaborations from Pharrell at Louis Vuitton. And I'm already bored of it. Like even the cut of the jeans, the boot cut, cut on the jeans the timberland louis vuittons like come on bro timberland's the fucking aesthetic of a timberland and that being in trend with all the kids online with some of the gen z kids like to wear big pants and big boots that's already dying he's already like what a couple of years late with the timberland thing it feels like like and again you'd think if you're a fashion brand you're the one that's dictating the trends you're not copying the trends you're the one that's kind of pushing things forward and again say what you want to say about Demna at Balenciaga but at least Demna at Balenciaga has a very distinctive um silhouette 
Um, he has a very specific taste, a very specific point of view um, that he's obviously putting out there when he does Balenciaga. When, with this sort of stuff that, you know, Pharrell's doing, the pants, that, sh that kind of boot cut, um, flared style is already kind of played out. Right? Even I have jeans that cut like that and I don't even wear them myself. The Timberland big boot thing is kind of played out also for me personally. I feel like that is also something that kind of needs to kind of get, you know, I'm kind of bored of it, move on. Especially the fact that these are probably going to drop when? A few a few seasons down the line, not a few seasons, but maybe a couple of seasons down the line. They're not something that's maybe imminently about to drop. I'm not too sure. But I do think this is another example. Big up, Richie, appreciate you. Okay, can we Livy stream the full winter show on the 16th? It will be his third show. Yay, I purchased four damouflage pieces and a speedy 25. The line looks good in person. The Tim's I'll stick to regular six in. <laughs> yeah 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 big up you big up you yeah that camo stuff is the best stuff the camo and the bag that you bought i think the bag is called the speedy um and like i said the beanie that asap rocky wore with the pearls the dent the matching denim jacket um there's actually i don't know if he if he put it out there's a louis vuitton m65 that he made i don't know if he actually if he's put it out yet but i remember when he got announced as the designer for louis vuitton he was pictured wearing this amazing green velvet M65 with like a white shirling collar or something that looks fucking stupendous. That was really nice. But most of it, not for me really. But big up Richie, though, um, appreciate you for the donation, brother. And yeah, for sure, we'll, de we'll definitely watch the live show on the 16th. Paris Fashion Week is about, is about to begin. So I'm going to be doing a lot more live streams of fashion shows and stuff and putting that out there as well for the content and whatnot. So big up um, you, big up you. Um, yeah, so I'm not a fan of the Timberlands. I think they're lazy. I think they're uninspired. I think they're just whatever. And if anything, they were, they're a bit late in the whole trend because um, people have already kind of moved on with the whole fucking Timberland thing anyway. There's actually another post here where somebody posted um, more details of the Timberland to kind of see what it looks like. And they actually look, you know, I guess the details do actually help in terms of what they look like to kind of give them a little bit more of an edge. Because if I'm not mistaken, the soles are even got the Louis Vuitton print on them. Let's see if I get, I think it's here. The actual soul himself have got the Louis Vuitton print. So you kind of get to, you know, um, step on the snow and get the flipping monogram print all over them as well. And if I'm not mistaken, the actual upper themselves have also been embossed. So you've got the added detail of the Louis Vuitton monogram here on the underside of the tongue. You've got the Louis Vuitton logo on the outside of the tongue as well with the Timberland logo. And if I'm not mistaken, if you look closely here, there's also loads of Louis Vuitton little embossing bits here and there. But again, like I said, it just feels late. It feels tired. The Timberland thing is kind of tired and done and they're still going for it. Okay, they haven't got the other picture, but there's another picture here somewhere where you can see the sole of it. But, you know, who cares of it? I'll maybe put that in later. But there's another picture where you can see the actual underside and the underside of the shoe has actually got the actual print. So you can kind of see what it looks like when you kind of step around this shit. But for me, I didn't really like it. I think it was kind of formulaic, a little bit too easy and whatever. And I'm not really for it. No, thank you. No flipping. Thank you. That's what I have to say about that regarding you.